next one on this actually this is another just a kind of uh updates upon updates canon actually appeared canon actually did um brian canon did a what everyone else does i think when they get accused of sexual misconduct or something untoward or saying something you know a bit racy on social they usually do a bit of a conservative um apology tour because for, for the most part those are the only platforms that will allow you to kind of speak your piece which is really disgusting in that regard right if you get accused of something you should be allowed to go on any platform you want to fight your case in good faith right not obviously be you know ambushed by journalists or pundits that want to make a name for themselves and get a bit of a moment on social but you should be allowed to the same platform that the accusers have you should be allowed to have it too um even if someone accuses you anonymously you should be allowed to call them out if they call you out by your name that should be a thing but of course, Stephen Crowder's got his own um, demons or his own skeletons, his closet. He's obviously got, you know, people are not really big fans of his show in general and his political leanings and his point of view, whatever, put that to one side. Um, he obviously got in it and revealed some interesting developments in the whole uh, T5K thing. So one, number one, is that he's no longer going to be on T5K. That show has been basically rebranded what it is now. Because I think a lot of fans realised that on the description, they changed it and took off Brian Cannon's name and just put uh, uh, Brendan with different co-hosts every week and stuff and called him a talented or a successful comedian, which was mad. But I guess on paper he is, but hey, they called him a successful comedian. And he's obviously, they've completely distanced themselves from Brian Cannon. I think even though the first show back, he did mention he's going to come back on the show, but it seems like from the sponsors... And the people that they're doing business with on the back end, because as much as Brian likes to, or Brendan likes to say otherwise, it's for sure, you know, T5K is their main cash cow. That's the one that brings them, that's the place where all of the sort of business avenues that Brandon, Brendan has been able to go down have kind of spawned from. Without T5K, he doesn't have his Fit Boy Bike Club, doesn't have Below the Belt, doesn't have all these other things that he does. That's the main cash cow. So they have to protect that, which is understandable. So I guess they came to a mutual decision to kind of take him off the show, rebrand it, or not really rebrand, well, rebrand it in name alone or in description alone, have different co-host that hasn't really worked out too tough i think mike effort has probably had enough of brendan's interruptions it seems that for the judging by the last couple of shows i've seen but you know the quality has gone way way down if anything brendan's probably the best operator for that show because he's obviously got the business mind to keep that show alive but in terms of entertainment pro in entertainment purposes and providing an actual fun interesting hilarious show he hasn't got a clue that it doesn't doesn't work and i think you see that with the king of the sting that sort of works mostly because of fear of one's genius and they sort of play off each other really well because they have a genuine sort of friendship but without that without that comedic relief without the ability to kind of bounce off each other and kind of you know have a bit of fun with stuff it turns into just brendan inviting his friends in who are probably less less successful and sort of like play second fiddle it's a weird dynamic it doesn't work that well so they're going to rebrand it and now they've got their own show called the fire in the rinks which is you know hilarious and probably the most la thing ever right you've been accused of something heinous like rape and then you go out and try and make a behind a paywall show behind a paywall show <laughs> called the fight in the rinks you know the name rinks what was that spawned what the past few months maybe or something right um to kind of what in the hopes that you're going to get the fans that watch it because for sure the show on youtube is you know it's, it's dying right it's not good it was amazing back in the day then it kind of slowly but surely kind of dropped in quality maybe because they were concentrating on their stand-up at the time maybe because they just got too big-headed whatever the show quality really dipped so to suspect to expect the same fans that watch that to then go and segue over and watch on patreon is a stretch but stranger things have happened brandon probably has as much as he has that weird formula where like in most celebrities you need to have you need to split the fan base 50 50 you need to have people that actually ride with you and people that really really think you're a piece of shit so i think because of that he's probably gonna have a lot of people jumping on that show and doing it and especially if they're able to change the format maybe maybe a bit more interesting maybe cover loads of cancer culture topics i don't know what they're gonna do on there but it's just a development and he sat down with a crowd that basically spoke about i'll play the clip for you now and then make some more comments on the other side this is from a twitter let me get up here Get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this. Hope it works out quickly. Is it probably buffering now, jittering? But hey, bear with me a second as it loads. Biddy 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 boom. There we go, Stephen Crowder. Boom boom boom. Come on, there we go. Of course, cool, loading now. Bang. Let's play this. The prevailing wisdom across the board is you got to lay low. You right. just have to be quiet because right. anything you say will keep it in the news. And, and I, 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 I just 
I think a human being and I think a country for that matter defines themselves on what they are willing to fight for and 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 the lines they're willing to defend yeah and and so oh like you defending your friend Chris Alia when he went through the same situation instead of defending him you got straight in front of the camera without calling him and started sobbing and crying fake crying behind your glasses that you just got plastic surgery done on your lids at the age of what 55 come on man now he's mr morality now he's mr nobility so for me I, i'm not going to do that because i didn't do this and i'm not guilty of this and so for me i thought to myself if i don't stand up the, the number of people that i know that have gone through something similar who've reached out or just people in general who said please please be the person to stand up and at least talk about this right because nobody wants to talk about the fact that <laughs> what we I do I don't even believe that's true but if it is true yet you have a lot of creepy friends if all your friends are calling you telling you that you need to stand up for rape and sexual allegations how many friends do you have that have been accused of that thing or you just mean in general dudes that get nervous about stuff like this it's like huh we are losing due process and I don't think anything anyone is necessarily to blame but look you have two factors one is social media if someone and it doesn't matter who they are it could be from 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, it could be whatever. It, they, and if, if, if somebody says something about you and they said that you said something, that you did something, that's all that it takes yeah. for yeah. your livelihood to stop. Right. Because nobody wants to get involved in that. Everybody kind of pulls back immediately. But that's the issue I have with him. He knew this prior. He was super annoying. I think in the last year or so with anything to do with cancel culture, if you're a fan of Defiant Kid, you know, he used to go on these long, unhinged rants about how cancel culture was basically ruining society and all this sort of nonsense, right? Kind of getting trying to get in his IDW bag. But it kind of seemed like it always touched the nerve, right? And it kind of made you think, hmm, what skeletons do you have in your closet? But regardless, let's put it aside. Let's say he does have strong opinions and strong thoughts about um, the negative effects of cancel culture and the negative effects of this society we live in where you can get essentially your life on your career can be put on hold due to an allegation i understand that if you have that kind of thinking why didn't you use that same way of thinking that same frame that same um that same uh approach or that same idea to kind of apply it to your friend Christelia? because if you would have stood up for him and fought his case under the same premise they would have probably been in a far stronger position together as a group but instead because he wanted to protect his own career and not his friends or not his friends that are coming after him who might get accused of things you know in the future which there's rumors of loads of other people are going to get accused of things as well going forward so if your favorite comedian is based in la you better start making your prayers now but if that was a, imagine if you would have done that. Imagine if you would have just stood up and defended Chris as a unit. They would have been collectively standing up to counter culture, LA comedians. It would have been a big thing. They could have segued it and lined up with the IDW and did the whole thing over there. There could have been an actual situ, a little mini movement online. It would have been a bit cocky, yeah, whatever. But they could have done it. They could have done something where they kind of, you know, really um, asked the journalists that like, reporting the story, that Amy Kaufman woman to, you know, answer for her, you know, journalistic integrity how did you vet this story all this sort of stuff they could have done if they would have actually stood up for that one guy even though at the beginning of course when the story came out it was bloody you know it took the roof of everyone's head and was like, oh my god i was shocked about the story but if you really looked at the allegations behind what happened with chris Delia, they were flimsy at best they could have easily stood up for him if anything brian Kelly's situation is probably far worse and far more toxic or far more radioactive to get near than chris Delia's one because you could maybe explain that away in some way shape or form but somebody's come out of the woodwork and accusing you of rape and then suddenly we're seeing you know and then suddenly we go back and think oh yeah we remember that clip of you and whitney talking about you just flung out your dick on somebody you in a car it doesn't really look good for him in general so to sit there and say all this stuff whilst he knows willingly that he kind of pushed himself away from his friend and delete all these pictures of him and chris on his social media accounts it's like come on man you can't be this you can't be this unaware and well so i would even say i would even correct you and say it's not that there is no due process it's there's no interest in due process and i'll read this from the, the well, people article where this this lady who came forward and accused you people can read it where she said she didn't submit to a rape kit because she thought it was invasive she also didn't tell her dad because she was afraid her dad might hurt you which to me this is just me my opinion i go hmm doesn't like it sounds to me like you'd want the dad to kick kick, kick a rapist's ass you think so maybe well, bury no, him in a bathrobe but, yeah. but but steven the mistake is to get into what someone's mind how someone's mind works i think this is a much bigger issue yeah. than just me 
I mean, and, and that's very important. Oh, no, definitely. It's a big issue in just you. But for sure, it's happening to just you. Important. I, I think that the fact of the matter is we live in a time when when if someone says something about you, you can you can be annihilated and you and there's no redemption. Mm -hmm. and, and that is a fact and that is happening. And I think it's a fun function of one whatever's happened in social media it is this sort of mob rule this sort of thing that people jump on but also you have publications you have credible publications that used to be really good newspapers and stuff that are desperate to get online subscribers paying online subscribers right and these newspapers are in real trouble i mean desperate trouble yeah and so what happens is there's enormous pressure on journalists to create clickbait to create sensation um, and, and, and so, so if you get more clicks, if you get more retweets, that's, that is the only way to survive. What happened? I don't know, Brian, man. As much as I think the allegations are dog shit, for him to suggest that somehow the, the mainstream media is attacking him for clicks and ratings is a bit of a stretch. He's not that famous, right? He's not that well known. He's not the most well known comedian out of that circle. Let's be fair. I love the guy, great stand up comedian, probably going to be a huge loss to the T5K army. But let's be real. Um, if anything, this was more so people seeing an easy way to basically, I think the real target is probably Joe Rogan, right? They see a good way to kind of take him down by one by one, knocking off all the people that surround him and then eventually going and hitting the big well. That's probably the reason that they're attacking him in this regard. Um, and again, he's probably unlucky because he's the only character within that group that does actually have some skeleton in his closet, right? He does actually have some stories and instances that seem a little bit fishy, that don't seem the, the most um, appropriate way to kind of deal with women in the Hollywood industry. So for sure, if they wanted to find some information, if they wanted to dig up some stories about anyone in the community, definitely it would be him. And then um, now they've actually announced, I think he announced in the uh, Stephen Crowder interview later on, um, that the fire and the kid is now gone or is now you know been changed he's not going to be part of it anymore i guess until the allegations are cleared up and instead they're they've got their own patreon that they're doing now right called the fight and the rinks i'm trying to see if i can get it up here so they're going to be doing a show behind a paywall which is both somewhat funny and smart but also very very um tone deaf i guess in some regards if you've been accused of something like this wouldn't you be trying to spend all your money time and resources to kind of um clear your name instead of putting up a show on patreon um what kind of capitalizing on the drama i'm not sure what they're going to do long term in that regard and patreon isn't the easiest platform to maintain a fan base on as soon as their fan base don't see that they get any value for the money they're going to just unsubscribe and take away the donations or their support from you but it just doesn't seem like the best way to go about things and if anything there's definitely going to be cannon fodder for the likes of these journalists like amy kaufman that um reported the story in the first place she's definitely going to report on this development and it's just not going to look good in terms of the defense now again if he's innocent i understand the reason to do it but come on it just seems a bit weird doesn't it going forward but <sighs> i guess they gotta keep it going he's got a house to pay for uh kids to look after i'm sure that divorce settlement money isn't cheap um whatever you know what i mean living in la doing your thing you know you gotta make a living so i don't disparage the guy go and do your thing but i just think if you're really innocent you would really spend your time and money trying to clear your name it's probably not going to do make any difference because i'm sure you know people in the industry are happy he's gone in some regard because it seems like anyone that they do try and cancel they obviously have a bit of a accident ground with that person anyway apart from chris hardwick it seems like no one actually gets cancelled and reintroduced back into the community and even chris hardwick maybe if you sat down with him he could probably say to you certain people have have kind of permanently backed away from him and you know taken away deals from him that he can never get back i don't know but there's not many of those kind of cases where somebody gets accused of something really heinous proves their name proves it um proves the story to be incorrect and then kind of is able to get their way back in the industry you have to be a mega mega star like a justin bieber right or that jake and josh guy right that recently been accused of something you can fight that on that level because you know you're such a big artist there's so much money banking on you that you're actually so your actual uh, sponsors and late record labels and the network you work with they're definitely going to you know help you and support you in any way they can because they've got too much tied up in your um in your image and what you represent to kind of just let the allegation run and run amok like that but um weird situation to be in they've got a patron now at the moment again i can't find it let me see if i can get it the fighter the fighter and the rinks patrons if i can get up on you they set it up recently i'm pretty sure 
uh where can i find it the fire the fire pilot podcast that's not here i can't find it the wizard thief the images anyway it's up there somewhere you'll be able to find it the fight in the rings podcast check it out if you want to i guess in that regard but absolutely shocking state of affairs for everybody 